Ryan and Guide Dog staff member Naomi standing next to each other outside in the Guide Dog training facility. Black Labrador Guide Dog in Training Shimmer is standing in between them. Alright, so we've left the little puppies to go and have a little snooze because they're a bit tired. And now we've come down here with Naomi down to the training facility with Shimmer. So Shimmer is uh, 18 weeks? Yeah, Correct. 18 okay. weeks old. 18 weeks and we're already in training. What age do they start to come yep. into training? Yeah, so once they go home at eight weeks of age to their puppy raises, um, at 10 weeks they come back here and they start a puppy class at 10 weeks of yep. age. So Shimmer's done his 10 week, his 13 week, his 16 week puppy class. He's graduated to get his coat. Yeah, and oh, now he's got a coat. He's got the coat. And so now his socialisation really starts. He's starting to go out now into light shop areas yep. where uh, perhaps pet dogs aren't allowed to go. So he sure. might be going into the news agents, into a little IGA. So that's the access all areas part. Correct, right yep, yep. So where your pet dogs can't go, Shima can go to get that socialisation because one day he's going to be a working guide dog. So yeah, okay. So what, is, what does Shima have to be able to do now? Now, well, he did a nice little sit then, good boy. And we're going to see if he can go into a down position. All so right. this is just basic down obedience. Good boy. Yes. Mind your way. I think I'm in the way. <laughs> no, that's okay. We'll blame that one on me. And buddy. now we're going to get him to stand. Oh, there we go. Stand. stand. Excellent. And we'll get him into a sit again. Shim up, 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 up. Sit. Yes. Good boy. Well done. We'll get him into a down. Down. I, I did actually yes. notice him. Good boy. Him. Sorry, you're, 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 you're all training. Right. You're training. Yeah, you're all right. Am I, am, and am I, am am I distracting or is this yes. a good thing? Yeah, no, good. He's working around you, so it's. In he's just end, ignoring me. Yeah, in the end, that's what he's going to have to be able to do. Walk through the streets um, and ignore people, ignore distractions like dogs and yep. cats, food on the ground. Um, so you can imagine a busy shopping centre or a train station. There's a lot of distraction around. Yeah, there is, but including be, humans who yeah. apparently try to whistle at dogs to get their attention. Am I right? Yeah, and we really ask that you do not distract a working guide dog. They've got someone's life in their hands and they're, they're doing a good job. Of guiding, so yeah, don't distract a guide dog. That's really important. Good boy. Leave a guide dog alone. <laughs> <laughs> would so, you like to have a go at some obedience with him? Well, look, I, I would just thought that, and he sat. So you know, I think that's pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Let's he's give on your shot. left hand side. He's on my left hand side. A few little bits of kibble so that you can lure him with that. So food training. Food training, reward-based yeah. training. Okay. So we start off with a little bit of his own kibble, and eventually we'll move to just verbal praise and pats. Okay, cool. I'm going to let you know. But I've actually got it. I'm not even going to give it to you yet, okay? So, so if you'd like to out? get him into a down, you go down, down between his legs. Yeah, and once he's in that position, we mark and yes. Yes. And reward. Good well Very good. Done. And we'll see if we can get him into a sit. You sit. Great. Good boy. And now to get him into a stand, you just bring your hand to his... Oh, he's going to do it. <laughs> anyway. Well, let's see if we can get you into a sit first. And now stand. Yeah, hey, and reward. Very good. good. Boy. So that's basic. Did I pass? You passed. Yes. Would you like to win a puppy? <laughs> I want a jacket. <laughs> um, so very good job. And that's just basic obedience that we can use while we're out socialising. So when we go to the IGA and we're wanting to buy something from the supermarket, it's really hard to juggle your handbag, your wallet, your purse and a pup. But if we can have basic obedience in place and ask him to sit, we know we can do that at a cash register and know that he's going to be well behaved. So early obedience then helps us with our socialisation later. Okay. So I did notice then, right, so you've used the word sit and he's sat. He's sat. You can so give him a pat and tell him he's a good boy. He doesn't oh, always boy. have to have the food. The food starts off as a lure yeah. of getting him interested in working and then we move to pat and praise. Yeah. Um, and in the end, he'll be doing the job for pat and praise and the joy of work. Yeah, so. yeah. So we wean you off the food. Yeah. So uh, we can do a recall. So that is when they learn to come on command. So if your dog's in the backyard yep. and you want to head out to start doing some work, we'll give them a call to come to us. Or if they're having some free time um, at an oval in a safe place, fully fenced, they can have some recall training too. So what we might do is we might get his puppy raiser Michelle to do the recall because he knows her best. So we'll uh -huh. hold him. Michelle will go to the other end of the um, yard and she'll Let's call him to her. So when he's first. really, really interested... Sit. sit. No, uh, we're going to sit. Good, good boy. So when he's really interested Stay. in Michelle, then we'll let go. So until she starts calling... 
Do I let do just I let the lead go just with him? Yeah. Go. Okay. There we go. Keep calling. Keep calling. And he's taught to go into her legs like that and she'll meet him at this level, take his collar and give him a reward. And that helps when he's a working guide dog that he's not running past the person because their vision, uh, have low vision or blindness. Yes. He needs to be able to come in, touch them, and, and then they'll that. take the collar. So, okay. yeah, super easy to train uh, because the reward at the end, a piece of kibble at the moment, and someone they know, Michelle. Gotcha. So that's, is, that, is that like really early for a puppy to actually come on command? Uh, it's, they start learning it from eight weeks of age. Um, right. You might do it in the hallway at home, close all the doors down the hallway. Yep. One person stands at one end, no distraction. And going to the other end of the hallway is a really big reward because there are other family members there and there's a piece of treat. Then we move it from the hallway to outside in the garden, so down the side of the home. Yep. There's often a little narrow side of your house where you put your rubbish bins and things like that and we'll do recall up there. Yep. Then we will go somewhere like a cricket net at an oval again enclosed and once we've got that really solid and we're really relying on him coming back then we'll practice it at an oval that's fully enclosed and yep. we just build it gradually to the level that he can cope with and succeed. Yes okay cool yep. so it's all about succeeding really isn't it? Yeah making it easy enough to succeed. Yeah that's oh that's amazing so uh, he's 13, 15 weeks at the uh, nearly 18 weeks nearly today. 18 weeks okay yep. cool all right and so then we get to 15 months and we've already heard from another trainer, uh, as, or a, a puppy, uh, raiser, a puppy yeah. raiser, as to what it's like to give a puppy back. But now I want to hear from you as what it's like to give a puppy back or to receive a puppy, puppy. back. Yeah, I guess um, it's something that we teach our puppy raisers very early on to be prepared for. So in our information sessions where we're teaching puppy, uh, puppy raisers or future puppy raisers about um, the program, we say you are going to get asked by your friends and family right now how could you give it back? They might say, I couldn't do this, I could never give it back. And I tend to say, let's think about psychology, use some tips from psychology and start preparing ourselves to tell a different story. Yep. So rather than just saying I can't give it back, perhaps try a different narrative of, I'm going to do this for a year and learn a lot. I'm going to do this for a year and enjoy the company of a puppy. Yep. Or as Jeanette said earlier, meeting new people and having some new friends. Yep. I'm going to do this for a year because I'm paying it forward and I'm helping somebody else. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do this for a year and I'll feel proud when my dog becomes a working guide dog. So when we practice a different narrative, we're preparing ourselves then for the future of being able to say goodbye. Doesn't mean we won't cry, doesn't mean we won't be sad, but we've practiced that narrative and we're excited to see what the outcome is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, when they graduate and they become a guide dog, then there's a whole sense of, 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 of being pr uh, proud about that. Yep. And that you've done an amazing service for somebody who genuinely needs it. That's it, yeah. And we try to keep our puppy raisers like Michelle involved through the training process. So we have a Facebook group for our puppy raisers and they can follow along with the dog's training. So they'll get photos of the dogs on, on a weekly basis. They'll get a, a phone call from the trainer on around about a monthly basis. And we keep them involved right at the end when the dog's just about to be matched to a, um, a client and become a working guide dog, we'd ask someone like Michelle to come back and watch the dog working in harness. And there's that reward at the end to see all that work that you've put in has, has come to this and the pride and the, I guess it's like your kids finishing high school or, or VCE or uni, you're just really, really proud to yeah, see that end result. And they, they've, they've left home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've left home. Yeah. We just succeed in, in that a lot quicker than parenting, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's parenting on speed dial, actually. Yeah, I like yeah. yeah. And, and you do, I, I use that as an example, you raise your children to be independent and to leave and to, to go out and experience things. We raise guide dog puppies to give somebody else a chance of that independence and to go out and experience life. Oh, so. fantastic. How highly rewarding. Yeah. The guide dog's logo appears.